Hey guys, just before we get stuck into the video, yes, I do have a cold, yes, my nose is red. Um, now, this video is gonna be in portrait. I know that's annoying. This video was originally gonna be for Instagram stories, but it turned into this monstrous thing. Um, it wouldn't fit on Instagram stories, so I decided to put it on YouTube instead. Um, but next time, I'll film it in landscape. Uh, for now, though, the rest of the video is gonna be in portrait. Just quickly though, if you do get to the end of the video and you enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments down below and I'll do more of these videos and let me know what you want to see more of as well. Uh, so that's it guys, we're going to make some tiramisu macarons, let's get stuck into it. Hey guys, uh, I'm Nick and on this episode of The Scrain Line we're doing something a little bit different today. Um, I'm doing a food vlog, so I'm going to show you guys how to make my tiramisu macarons. I'm going to vlog the entire thing. Some of it's going to look a little bit terrible, but this video is going to go for a while because um, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make my tiramisu macarons from start to finish. Now, if you want to grab the recipe, it's on my website, thescranline.com. Um, we're going to go through the recipe together and we're going to go through all the tips and tricks because I know with macarons, they can be devastating if you get them wrong and amazing if you get them right. So let's get them right together. Now guys, I guess the very first thing <laughs> you need to get right is actually measuring all of the ingredients. Uh, so there's two things to, that to, you need to remember <laughs> when you measure macaron ingredients. First thing is use a pair of kitchen scales. So I've got some digital kitchen scales here and these come in handy because with macarons, you need to be super duper accurate, which leads me onto my second point, be super duper accurate. Um, if the recipe says a certain amount with macarons, it has to be perfect. Otherwise, you end up with all sorts of disasters and we wanna make successful macarons today. The very first thing I do with, oh, bad angle. The very first thing I do with my macarons is, uh, pop the almond meal, so almond meal and my powdered sugar or icing sugar into one of these things. Now, if you don't have a food processor, you can sift the ingredients together. You need to do it three times. The reason is because you wanna make sure that if there's any like large clumps in your almond meal, because it's not perfect, you wanna make sure that you get rid of those so that your macarons are actually smooth. Otherwise you end up with kind of like chunky looking macarons. And you want them to be nice and pretty. Okay guys, so here is my food processor bowl. I am using um, it's called a Kenwood Multipro, so I've had this thing for ages, it's incredible, they just work. <laughs> and I've had this thing for ages, so that's what we're going to be using now. Like I said, you can sift these ingredients together, but this is so much quicker. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop in our icing sugar or powdered sugar, depends on what you know it as. Um, so pop that in there, and then we're going to add our almond meal. Now this mixer is really, really big, so it fits all of this stuff at once. If your mixer is not big, you need to add these like half at a time. So half of this, the powdered sugar and half of the almond meal, process it and then do it again. Okay, so this is done. Now I did mention that you sift these ingredients. If you don't have one of these, you're still gonna be sifting them. So we're gonna take them out of here. We're gonna sift them once. So I've got my almond meal and the powdered sugar in here. We're gonna run it through the sift once because we've already processed it in the food processor. Now, what this actually does as well is it helps kind of get rid of the big clumpy bits of almond meal um, and it kind of breaks them down. So that's what putting them in the food processor will do as well. So just sifting them once. Now guys, do you see those big clumpy bits that are going all over my floor right now? <laughs> Those are the bits you don't want in your macarons. You want to get rid of these, so you're going to throw them in the bin. The next bit is your egg whites. So, the egg whites are going to go in here, but before we put them in there, I just want to go through a little thing called aging your egg whites. You might have heard that term. So, what this basically is, is you separate them from the yolks. Um, a couple of hours before you make your macarons, I actually like to do it the day before. So, separate them and then pop them in the fridge, um, and then use them the next day when I make the macarons. Um, aging your egg whites helps them whip up a little bit better. You don't have to do this step, but if you're anything like me and you love it when macarons work, 
then you want to do this step. It takes two seconds. So I'm just gonna make a little well in the center here and we're gonna pop our first batch of egg whites in there and we're gonna use our spatula to mix it all up. Guys, the first time I made these, I didn't think that this was actually going to turn into a paste, which is what you want it to turn into, um, because there was just like way too many dry ingredients. So if that's the thought that's running through your mind, don't worry about it. If you just keep on mixing, it actually does turn into a paste. Um, and that's what you're looking for. So you want to mix this until it turns into a paste. We have reached paste consistency. So we are going to set this aside. We're going to move on to making our syrup. Okay, I've taken you guys over to the stove. I'm having a little bit of lean so that I can be in camera. Um, we are going to be making the syrup. Now there's two different ways to actually make macarons. One of them is the French method. Another one is the Italian meringue method. So. When you're referring to these two methods, you're referring to the actual meringue, so how you actually make the meringue. Um, we're going to be doing the Italian today because I've actually done both methods, but I find you get more consistent results with the Italian. So the Italian is making a hot syrup, adding it into your egg whites while the milk is on high speed. The French method is just adding the sugar into your egg whites and then mixing it and making the meringue that way. Um, you might be familiar with that method, I just think that the Italian one is a little bit more consistent. And guys, the running theme today is going to be making successful macarons. <laughs> I'm not a fan of unsuccessful macarons. So I've got this cute, cute little pot. We're going to pop it on the stove and we're going to turn the heat on high heat. It doesn't really matter what you do first, but I like to put the water in first and then the sugar. So our sugar and water is in. We are going to let this come to a boil on high heat and then we're going to turn it down and we're going to let it simmer. So we're actually going to be using a candy thermometer to measure the temperature of the syrup so that we get to the exact right temperature. Now guys, for those of you who don't know what a candy thermometer is, uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes, but the one that I use looks like this. It's from Cuisino and uh, this is what we're going to be using to measure our syrup so we'll just turn it on and what you do is after it's come to a boil you're going to pop it in there and you're going to get to 115 degrees celsius we have reached boiling point so we are going to be putting our candy thermometer in here 115 degrees is what we're looking for Meanwhile, it is abs I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it is pouring down outside today. It's probably why it's so dark in here. But I just wanted to quickly show you guys my new mixer while that syrup is bubbling away. Um, I got this new mixer from Kenwood and it's a Kenwood Chef XL Titanium. Even though it's dark today, look what this thing can do. Lights up the bowl. So we're gonna be using that today. Our syrup has reached 115 degrees Celsius. Next step is putting the egg whites into the mixer. We are going to be using a whisk attachment and popping our second batch of egg whites into our mixer because we're going to whisk this up on medium speed while the syrup reaches 118 degrees Celsius. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is pouring down outside. That was lightning. Um, I put the lights on because it's just getting darker and darker. And I know you guys couldn't see me. So um, this has been mixing for about three or four minutes. Um, we're going to pop some vanilla extract in next. Now, because these are tiramisu macarons, we're gonna be making them coffee flavored. So I'm gonna be baking a little coffee shot with some instant coffee powder 
and the tiniest amount of boiling water. <laughs> I know I said that weird, but it needs to be the tiniest amount because adding moisture to macarons can be a bit of a tricky thing. It can result in cracked macarons. So you want the tiniest amount, maybe about half a teaspoon of boiling water, just enough to mix it all together. Amarang's been mixing uh, or whipping for about 10 minutes. Now you can tell that um, it's good to go with a couple of different things actually, but if you touch the side of the bowl, you can feel that it's cooled down. So that very hot syrup um, has gone into the egg white, whipped it all up and the bowl has cooled down. But also the meringue should be really thick and glossy like this. So that's what we're looking for. Okay guys, so the next bit, <laughs> is so important. Um, let me tell you a quick little story. So, the very first time I made macarons, they came out absolutely perfect. Um, and I think it was beginner's luck because the next 10 times, um, and I'm not even joking, they were complete failures. Not rising properly, cracks, rising lopsided, um, everything, I went through it, you name it, I went through it. Um, now, after the, the tenth time, I actually had like a little mini nervous breakdown <laughs> um, and I didn't make them for a year. And then I had taken, about a year later, I had taken a trip to um, Europe. I spent my last two weeks in France and um, France coincidentally is the reason why I fell in love with pastries. But I happened to take a macaron class and I discovered that the way, the, the reason why my macarons, well, most of the problems I had with them was in the mixing stage. And the mixing stage is really, really important. Now, some people actually count the amount of times that they mix. I don't count the amount of times I mix because I don't think that you need to. I think it's more about knowing the consistency to look for. Um, so what we're gonna do is we've got our almond mixture here. We're gonna add um, one spatula full of our meringue. So I've got my meringue here. Um, we're gonna add one spatula full of our meringue into our almond mixture. And we're just gonna work it and we're gonna mix it in. So it's not too important um, to like be careful of how, like over mixing. At this point, you don't need to worry about over mixing. It's more about making sure that you thin out that almond mixture because it is quite thick. Um, so it's more about that. So adding one spoon of that meringue will help thin it out. Okay, so this is thinned out pretty well. So you'll be able to see um, it's nice and consistent. Like it's, there's no like big bits of almond meal that haven't been mixed or big bits of meringue that haven't been mixed. You just want to make sure it's mixed in really, really well. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the rest of our meringue in there. And this is the important mixing stage, guys. This is where you want to be careful. So we're going to add all that beautiful, beautiful, delicious meringue in there. Don't be tempted to eat it, guys, because the more you eat, the more chances that this won't work. All right, so mixing. I'm using a nice stiff spatula. I think that's important for making macarons. Um, now, the alternative is that with these Kenwood mixers, they actually come with a folding tool, so you can use that as well. I'm just used to doing it by hand, so today we're gonna to be doing it by hand. Um, so I like to mix, I just noticed I got something on my hand. So I like to mix by going around the bowl like this, and then through the middle. And I continue doing that motion until I get the consistency that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna keep mixing, and then I'm gonna show you guys the consistency we're looking for, which I call the ribbon stage. Okay, so like I've reached the point where this mixture is actually like uniformly mixed now. So there's like no bits of meringue or almond meal, like large chunks of those two things together. It's pretty well mixed. Um, so at the moment you can see it's still quite thick, like it's not even coming off the spatula. Um, we just keep on mixing. I'm not gonna lie guys, a lot of <laughs> my crossfit is coming in handy with this. Like it takes a little bit of elbow grease. 
Okay, so I've been mixing for a couple minutes and I can tell that this is already starting to thin out. Like you can see that this mixture is really thinning out. Um, we're not quite at the ribbon stage yet because you can see it's kind of falling in groups. We want to keep on mixing so that it's falling off the spatula in kind of like a ribbon. So let's keep mixing. Definitely, definitely getting there. We can see that it's not breaking as much. So I reckon like a couple more mixes and like at this point when you can see like it's really thinning out you want to keep on testing it every couple mixes just to make sure that it's at that point. Um, because if you go beyond the ribbon stage guys there's no going back unfortunately and you have to start this entire process again. Okay guys this is what we're looking for. This is the ribbon stage so it kind of falls off the spatula into the rest of the mixture in kind of like a ribbon. Once you reach that stage I know I sound weird guys but it's just that I feel really passionate about getting macarons right and uh, this is what you need to look for when you're mixing the ribbon stage. So let me just quickly show you again. See how it falls back into the rest of the mixture in a ribbon? That is the perfect consistency. When you get to that consistency, stop mixing. We're gonna move on to the next bit. Before we pipe the macarons, I have a book called Sugar Rebels that I wanna tell you guys very, very quickly about. Now, the reason I'm bringing this book out is because first of all, it's a magnificent book. <laughs> um, but there's actually a huge, like double page spread here on macarons. So. Um, any of the troubleshooting, lots and lots of tips and tricks in the book. Um, so grab the book and uh, it's lots of handy tips in it. Not just on macarons, it's like cupcakes and cakes and macarons. The next stage is piping the macarons. So I've got a baking tray here with a silicon baking mat. Um, you don't have to use these things. You can use baking paper instead if you don't have these. I just find these are easier to use. Um, they're really easy to clean and they're just super duper handy. So um, we're gonna need that. We're gonna need about five of these. And we're also gonna need a piping bag fitted with a medium round tip. Um, and let me show you guys how to fill this up without making a huge mess. So I've got a tall uh, glass or a cup or whatever you wanna call it. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna kind of like do this for the piping bag and then sit it inside there. So the piping tip is at the bottom and then you've got uh, this cup holding up your piping bag as you fill it. So our macaron butter is here. So I'm just gonna add like a couple spatula fulls of our mixture into our piping bag. So you don't want to fill this up too much guys because then you end up with a mess while you're piping. You want to fill it up about like just under halfway. So I like to space them out a fair bit. I don't want to angle these too much because they'll, they'll warp. But this is how big, about three centimeters in width and space them out a lot guys. That's why I have so many trays because I don't like macarons like joining with each other. I'm a little bit paranoid about that. So I like to space them out as much as I can. Okay, so we've piped our macarons and um, they're nice and beautifully done, if I do say so myself. Um, so the next thing we need to do is actually tap the tray. And what this does, so you want to tap it nice and flat three times. And what this does, it helps bring any air bubbles that it's in the mixture up to the top so that your macarons actually rise beautifully because that can sometimes like hinder them rising properly. Um, I'm going to show you guys a little bit more about the rising a little bit later once they're baked But um, you want to make sure that you do that and we're also going to dust these with some cocoa powder because tiramisu has cocoa powder I've just got some cocoa powder in one of these like tea strainer things because Like you don't want too much cocoa powder on them You just want them to like look nice and even and pretty so we're just going to gently tap our finger on the tea strainer and dust them with some cocoa powder really, really lightly. 
and it's gonna make a little bit of a mess, but don't worry about that. We got some cocoa powder on our macarons. There we go, okay, so that, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's what they look like. Let me see if we can focus. Okay, so that's what they look like. We've dusted them with some cocoa powder. We're gonna let these rest for about 30 minutes. Um, so the whole point of letting them rest is that it helps them develop skin. So when they do develop skin, um, and you can touch them and they don't stick on your finger um, Then they actually rise better because instead of it rising like the steam or the heat rising out the top of the macaron It actually rises out the bottom and it forms these little thing called feet And that's what you're looking for in a macaron So we're going to let these sit for 30 to 40 minutes when you can touch them and they're not sticky We're gonna pop them in the oven now, while those are drying, I just want to quickly chat to you guys about the oven. So I get a lot of questions about oven, like fans and, and heating and temperatures and all that kind of stuff um, for macarons. So I use the fan setting on my oven. Well, actually, I used to use the fan setting on my oven in my old apartment. In this apartment, this fan setting is too strong. So if you're finding that your macarons are kind of rising lopsided and one side has the feet but the other side of the macaron doesn't, then what you want to do is you want to actually bake them on the convention uh, setting, so with no fan, um, on a little bit of a higher temperature than what the recipe says. So maybe like 15 degrees higher than what the recipe says. Um, and that's what you do if your fan is too strong. I'm really excited to show you guys the next bit because while those macarons are drying and baking, we're going to move on to making our cream cheese mascarpone frosting. So, uh, the reason I'm putting cream cheese frosting in these macarons is because it's delicious. That's just the truth. Um, my cream cheese frosting is, the recipe is on my website. But the best thing about my cream cheese frosting recipe is that it's really super pipeable. And let me show you the magic ingredient. And that is, I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but the magic ingredient is actually milk powder. Um, milk powder actually makes this super delicious um, and creamy and actually helps stabilize it as well. The first thing we're gonna do is add some soft butter um, into our bowl. Now you can see, I've, it's actually quite cold today. So what I've done is, I just popped it in the microwave for about 10 or 15 seconds just to soften it a little bit. So we're going to pop that in. Now with the cream cheese, it actually needs to be straight from the fridge. So we're going to pop that in there as well. Now that cream cheese frosting guys, Philadelphia cream cheese, don't use uh, spreadable cream cheese. It's not going to work. So in our mixer, we're going to be using our K beater or the paddle attachment. And we're just going to pop it in here. Now, we're going to be mixing this on high speed. I forgot to mention, one of the most important things about this frosting recipe is always mix on high speed. <laughs> if you mix on low speed, what happens is it actually softens the cream cheese and then it's not really pipeable. So we need to make sure we mix on high speed. We just want to make sure that this is mixed properly. It doesn't have to be super smooth, but we just want to make sure that the cream cheese and butter are mixed together before we add the powdered sugar or icing sugar. So we're going to add that into our bowl. So this time, guys, we're going to mix on low speed just so we can help everything combine. And then when we see like no dry ingredients in the bowl, then we're going to pop it back up to high speed again. And we're going to continue mixing until it's nice and white and creamy and super duper smooth. So right now, I don't see very many dry ingredients. So I'm going to pop it up to high speed. Okay, guys, so our cream cheese has been beating for about five minutes. Um, it's super duper smooth. It's uh, not super duper soft either. It actually is holding its shape really, really well. So you can see that it's holding its shape. Um, we're going to be adding some vanilla extract in here. So I actually like to use a lot of vanilla extract because this cream cheese frosting really soaks in that vanilla flavor and I like it really, really vanilla-y. The next thing we're going to be adding is some mascarpone cheese. So we're going to pop that in there. We're going to mix this on high speed guys and then this is pretty much done after a couple of minutes. Good. 
Guys, this cream cheese is done. It is ready to go into our macarons. You can see it's holding its shape really, really well. It's nice and smooth. It's so creamy and so vanilla-y and so delicious. We're gonna pop this into a piping bag with a Wilton 6B piping tip and we're gonna frost our macarons. So our macarons have been sitting here for about 30 minutes and let me just show you what it looks like when you touch them just so you know when it's time to put them in the oven. So if you can touch them and they don't stick to your finger, then these babies are ready to go in the oven. So our macarons have baked beautifully. Um, let me show you what they look like. Okay, so we've got our macarons baked, our cream cheese frosting is good to go. The next thing we're gonna need is some of my chocolate sauce recipe and you can grab the recipe for that on my website as well. It's so easy guys, it's literally put all the ingredients in the bowl, there's like five ingredients, put them in the microwave and then just microwave them until everything is melted and that's what we're gonna be using for the center of these delicious macarons. Okay, so I've got my piping bag fitted with my Wilton 6B piping tip um, and we're gonna frost these macarons. Now, just very quickly guys, before we do that, I just wanted to very quickly show you the feet of a macaron. So this thing down the bottom, this beautiful little ring around the bottom, that is what the feet are. So the, the steam and the heat escapes that and the macarons rise and get this beautiful feet. Um, and they're meant to be crispy on the outside and nice and soft and chewy on the inside. So let's frost these and finish them off. So our macarons are finished. This is what it looks like. Pretty, pretty, and pretty. Um, so I'm gonna pop these in the fridge and let them set a little bit, because if I try biting into it now, it's just gonna squish everywhere, the cream cheese frosting. So um, guys, these can be stored in an airtight container for up to three days. After that, they start kind of going a little bit dry, but you can make these three days in advance and they should be fine. Now guys, I forgot to film an outro for this video, so uh, thank you so much for watching. Now, I don't know which way it's gonna be, but it's either this way or that way. Hit that button to subscribe and that button to watch more macaron videos on this channel. I have a macaron playlist as well, so make sure you head on over to watch that. Thank you so much for watching guys. I know it was annoying watching this in portrait um, and maybe next time I'll figure out a way to make the camera a little bit smoother. But the idea behind this was to make something that was in the vlog style. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you want to see more of on this channel and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll see you all on the next episode of The Scran Line.